Look at this. The glasses here, two, three, four, five, six pair of glasses and a fidget spinner. You're out of your mind. How you doing, folks? Today, this is this is Ice House. Ice House. My wife picked it up. She said, "I told her to give me something weird." Picked up a big can of Ice House, 5.5 percent alcohol by volume, and if you pour it sideways, it doesn't glug because I can't even fit all that in there. If you pour it straight, it glugs. If you pour it sideways, it doesn't. Look at that beer in my Smithix glass. All right. This is things I don't get, pet peeves, uh, what the heck kind of video. I don't get people, man. I don't understand some people. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna give you some, some things that I just don't understand people. And, and things that just go wrong. Okay, first one. First off, I'm gonna start off with, did you know alligators can grow up to 15 feet most of them only have four. There you go. <laughs> All right, here, here's one for you. Number one, I got 21 of them. Number one is people come up to you and say, are you talking behind my back? And you say, oh my God, you, you have no idea. I talk behind your back here. I talk behind your back at home. I talk your back in people in supermarkets. And you don't even know these people. I tell them everything. I got a blog I got to, you know, keep up on. You have no clue, man. All the time. That'll nip it in the bud. Then it'll leave you alone. Okay, so another one. Clark Kent. Uh... People who disrupt a flight. Now, I don't care if you have some mental disability idiots, just Karen or Kevin, I don't care. If you're drunk and you're on a plane, I don't care if you're on drugs. I don't care if you're, you're so stone sober. If you disrupt a flight bad enough that they have to stop the flight and Fort land or something and everybody got to get off there you're put on a list where you can't fly ever again take a bus drive walk ride a bike crawl nope you're not worth society to put up with your bs yeah you you, you know what i was gonna say wait all right next one uh speeding tickets should be on income. Some countries do this. Like, if, if, if a guy makes $100,000 a year, you give him a $200 speeding ticket, he don't care. He'll, he'll pay that right off. But, you give him a $5,000 speeding ticket, he's gonna be like, whoa, maybe I should watch my tickets. That's the way it should be. Yeah, and if you're handicapped, and you get a speeding ticket, it's double. You're handicapped, you're supposed to be careful. All right, number four, tell your kids, please, tell your kids to not talk to strangers. I'll be out front, and there's kids I've never even seen before. They come up and they start talking to me. I'm talking to George, my neighbor, and we're sitting there talking. These kids come up and start talking to us like, like they know us. I was like, you, you can't do that, man. You got to... What about Stranger... I never heard of Stranger Danger back in the 80s, I guess it started. I never heard of that. I, I don't know if it was in the 80s. It might have been the 90s. I never heard of it. But you can't be talking to strangers. You don't know who to... I would never let my kid go door to door selling stuff for school. There's there's a lot of sickos out there that... Man, I, they ain't getting tangled up in them. Come on, Lois. Um... Don't complain about the price of gas if you drive something you don't need. If you drive a Hummer, and, I mean, if it's if it's for a business, I can understand your gripe. 
but that just goes into the cost of your product that you're making, you know, or you're delivering or whatever. But if, if you're driving, if you're getting like 17 miles per gallon and you don't need that, you're just a big expensive grocery getter and you just wanted something bigger than the Joneses down the street. No, that's vanity. You don't need that. Don't buy something you don't need. You can't afford to put gas in. I was, I was just watching uh, uh, Sam's Club. They have a, the, the Sam's Club and then they have a, a gas station. There are people lined up, five and six cars lined up at a pump to get gas 24 cents cheaper than right across the street, 24 cents. Now, if you buy 10 gallons, that's only gonna cost you $2.50, right? You're gonna save $2.50. You're gonna sit there and wait for $2.50? Not me, I'm going over there, I'm pumping. $2, really? You probably spend two dollars. You probably spend five dollars a day on your Starbucks milkshake. You know, <laughs> you gotta go to Starbucks every day and get that milkshake. Then you get a, then you get an energy drink and then you know some stackers or something. Ugh. I knew somebody who used to take those things. Mess you up. It don't mess you up. All right, number six. Tired of hearing about it. You glasses are more wobbly, crooked than I am. EpiPens. I remember a few years ago, I was talking about them. It, it, every so often, something comes out that the world freaks out over EpiPens. The cost of EpiPens, $600 each. Now, I've never met somebody. I've met people saying they were allergic to bees. Do you have an EpiPen? No. You're not allergic to bees. Otherwise, you'd have that damn thing. In a, in a holster, you know? What? You know, oh, if I get something by a bee, I'm gonna die. Well, dude, you gotta have, they don't have them. I know of two people that don't even have an EpiPen and they say they're allergic to bees. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> my, that's my uh, Biden impression. Come on, man. No, they don't get on playing around, peeling an onion in that bag of curly mine. Yeah. Okay, number seven. I hear this all the time. Rape on podcasts. They don't call it rape anymore. They call it sexual assault. Is that the same thing? Am I missing something here? I hear sexual assault all the time. And I'm thinking, what? Why don't you just call it rape? Because rape sounds worse. You don't want some. It sounds like a worse thing you're doing. Now, why wouldn't you, you, it's a bad thing you're doing. You want it to sound the worst thing you possibly can. Come on. Sexual assault. I don't, yeah, wait. Ah. All right. The thumbs up emoji is offensive and condescending to millennials. You know why it's condescending? because that kid was never told no as a child, got the participation trophy, never got his butt beat for doing something wrong. You know, it, it okay, if, if the kid's gonna touch a stove that's just been turned off and it's hot, and he's gonna, you say no, and he'll be like, no, oh, touch it anyway. Then he gets burned. Is that abuse? No, you didn't, you didn't hit him. He touched the damn thing when your back was turned. That's his fault. But if you smack his hand, you, I mean, just lightly smack your hand. No, don't do that. He'll learn. It's just, I don't, that's the problem. People get timeouts and they, and they oh, I'll just do it. All the guy, all the parents are going to do is give me a timeout or yell at me. There's nothing, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't get it. Oh, well. <sighs> never being told no. Give them everything they want. And then society has to put up with their crap. All right, number nine. Unless you have a tuxedo, you're getting married, bow ties. I don't care if you're Albert Einstein. I don't care if you're Stephen Hawking. I don't care if you're Neil deGrasse Tyson. If you have a bow tie, I'm not taking you serious. I'm sorry. Put a nice tie on, or don't put a tie on at all. I don't care. I'll tell. I'll, I'll, you, 
You might as well just put a beanie on with the little helicopter thing, too. That's the way I see you when you're sitting there wearing a bow tie. I'm going to start spinning. You know? Yeah! Come on! Why do people still, number 10, when they, when they give you a web address, why do they still say www? World Wide Web. Why do they say that? I don't understand. They still say it. And here's another thing. Do you ever see this guy walking around? You look him up on YouTube. Asking millennials or Gen Zs. Easy, he's asking adults this too. Some of them. Some of them are like in their 20s and 30s, 30s and 40s. Yeah. How many stars are on the American flag? They don't know. When was the war in 1812? And they're like, oh, um, uh, who fought in the Civil War? And they're like, uh, Germany and France. And they're like, yes. That's what he, he tells them, yes. And they're like, hey, I got it right. I'm smart. And then they'll go around and spread that. <laughs> and they were totally wrong. It's hilarious how, how people... I don't know how many people actually know the questions. Maybe he filters those out that know the questions and he's just making these people that don't know the questions and making like a whole bunch of people are idiots, which probably is true. Anyway, okay. <laughs> there is a lawsuit going on. I don't know, it, it was in the news a couple weeks ago. I don't know if it's, it, it's probably been thrown out. A lady is suing Texas beet hot sauce. Lives in California, that explains everything. Uh, because it's made in North Carolina. Now, you're suing, it's actually the guy's, the son, the guy's son's nickname, Texas Pete. But it's made in North Carolina. You're suing them. They're suing them because it's, it's not made. Well, I got, I got news for you. Kentucky Fried Chicken, not, not fried in, in Kentucky. New York strip steak? Not from New York? I don't know. I don't know. Mountain Dew? <laughs> not made in the mountains. It's <laughs> not new. And Prego spaghetti sauce. Doesn't get you pregnant. So, oh, I don't understand it. Okay, number 12. When you know you're doing something wrong, illegal, in the workplace, and you know you're not supposed to do it, and you still do it, and you have to be told about it, you're not bright. Your intelligence is very, very low. You're, you, no. I keep you at a distance. Just, no. You, you, no. Your IQ is, is too, maybe you shouldn't be working there. Be a greeter at Walmart. You know it's wrong. And you still did it. It jeopardizes the company because there could be a number they can call, get the company in trouble, but you still do it. No. Um, the Ohio Lottery says they pay $2.5 million daily out. What they don't tell you. Oh no. What do they make daily? How much money do, does the Ohio Lottery make per day? If they're paying out 2.5 million, can you imagine if you owned a business, how much money you would have to make to pay out 2.5 million every day? Holy crap, mind blown. Because someone did that a while ago with the, the, I don't know if they do it anymore. If they, I never flown, I never flown on an airplane. Um, I, um, that somebody took an olive out of the salad and they crunched the numbers. If they take the olive out of the salad, they'll save this X amount of dollars. But they're not they're not saying how much the airlines are making. You know, because an olive? Oh, come on. Won't you just get rid of the whole salad? You know, they probably do now. 
I don't know. I don't want. Can you get a? How, I wonder how much the difference is flying first class and coach. I'm going to Google this. I'm going to Google this. First class, same, first class, same flight, and then coach. I don't know. Anyways, isn't it funny how people, how politicians, want everybody to buy an electric car, but they don't buy one themselves. You ever know? You ever notice that? They don't fly commercial airlines. No, they got their own private jet, but they want you. Politicians. Right? Anyway. Okay. Ha Okay, you can have a guy going to do something stupid. He's going to jump on a pogo stick, one-handed, while playing badminton or something, or tennis or whatever it is. And someone's going to say, that is stupid. That's dumb. But then again, then he says he's doing it for charity. Oh my God, and for charity, it's the best thing in the world. Oh, we got to give him all our money now. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's the same thing. It, it's the same thing to people who do these world records and they like tightrope walking or something. And they're 35,000 feet in the air between two balloons and they're tethered in. And so if they fall off, they get, they, no, you take that thing off and then you go up that high because if you're tethered in, you can just go eight feet off the ground or five feet off the ground and just walk across and say, Hey, I did it 35,000. It doesn't matter if I did it 30,000 feet. I, I don't understand. Like people who swim like long, great distances. They have a, a boat next to them. They get out and go to the bathroom or whatever. I don't know if they go to the bathroom, but no, you have regular, a swimsuit on and you swim. You're not getting out for bathroom breaks. You're not getting out because you're tired. You're not getting out because, oh, um, I'm hungry. No, no, no. You swim and then that's the longest record. Nothing with the suits that keep you afloat or anything like that. No, I'm, no, no, it doesn't count. If you're tight rope walking and you're tethered in, it doesn't count as a world record to me. And then, you, you know, uh, I, I just get frustrated with that. Oh, wait, wait. Let's use these. Whoa. You know what I could do? I could triple them up. No, I'll. Uh. All right. This one, someone might think that, well, you're just a wuss. You're insecure. Okay. I'm a wuss. I'm insecure. But you go into the, the bathrooms and any places and you got the stalls and they this high off the ground and they go way up. You know? Why are the urinals have the, the, the dividers? How come they don't go way up? Because I don't want to sit there and then eye to eye with this guy and Gary over here pissing next to me. I don't want to have eye to eye with him. Can you imagine you're in there and, and there's three urinals? The bro code, you never go in the middle. You always take the ends. And if, if I go in there and the ends are taken, I'm not going in the middle. I'm going right in the sink. <laughs> you know, I'm not going in the sink. I'll, 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 I'll just pee my pants right there. I don't care. Or I just get right behind the guy, you know, like you know, real close behind him. You know, a <laughs> good chance of getting knocked out. But, uh, but I don't know why they don't have the dang things up higher. You know, I want to, I want to go into the ceiling so Manu Bull can't come in here, Ming Yao can't come in here and, and, and you know, and, and point down at me and start laughing. Because he can't even pee in the dang toilet. He'd be peeing down. He'd be peeing straight ahead. He'd be splashing. I get backsplash all over me. He'd be peeing all over everything. Okay. Put the urinal sections on. That's all I'm asking. Going over some duct tape and a piece of cardboard. Okay, uh, flight path over in Russia. It was a military flight path that someone flew, and it was an insult to Vladimir Putin, and it looked like a penis. All right, I was like, I give him credit. It was funny, you know. Who's going to be offended by that? You know, I got a copyright strike. It was a warning. It was a warning on one of my videos where I impersonated Kim Jong-un. And it was a big pile of crap. And in my impersonation of Kim Jong-un, a pile of crap. I don't know how many years ago I made that. 
I mean, it must have been three or four or five years ago. And they've given me a warning. And I was like, no, click, you, you review that. I don't care if I got a copyright strike on that dang thing. That's just, who's offended by something you're, 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 you're insulting a dictator? You know, he probably watched the video himself. He's like, ooh, this guy's gonna make fun of me. Let's see. Let's see how good of an impression he is. Yep, I got it, nailed it. <laughs> okay. Anybody who says, I heard Barack Obama say this, but he's he's a smart guy. I don't know. Um, he's probably smarter than me. But anybody who says that's above my pay grade or below my pay grade, lazy. They don't want to learn anything. They just want to just do the bare minimum and don't get nothing. Lazy. Don't want to learn. Never stop learning is my, my say. Anywho, try something. Try something out. Make something. Learn something. Hands are dry. Okay. Uh, what? Oh, all right. I, I listen to a lot of uh, a true crime podcasts. They're fascinating how they go through the, the person's lives and stuff. Okay, the person, they, they, they murder somebody and the, the, the people say, we want justice for so-and-so that was murdered. No, they're dead. They don't care. They don't know if you got justice for that person or you got justice, you got, you caught the criminal. They want closure. But if closure is for you. Justice is for the living because they got somebody. It doesn't matter if the person was, was, you know, there are people on death row and in prison right now that have, that are innocent. And it's just, it's the, the, the victim's families are just excited that they got somebody. They could, it could be Waldo. And they say, yeah, we got him. We got somebody. We got him. They're not going to question anything. But when it's a, when it's an absolute reason, there's no D DNA doesn't match up or nothing. There's DNA all underneath their fingernails and everything, their hair in their hands. It's from the attacker. And you got this guy that the DNA never, they don't care. That guy, they got that guy. They'll never say, oh, well, okay, maybe he isn't that. Let's go find the real guy. Let him out. I think there was one time that somebody said that. I don't think this is the killer because it was DNA evidence. And I think the Innocence Project is taking care of that. And the guy is unbelievable. He was, uh, she was in prison for over it was like 21 years, killing her husband or something like that. Had, had you know, but, but for bring justice for the family is not for the dead person. It's for the, for the fa living family to feel better. That's all it is. Not gonna bring them back. I mean, if you get millions of dollars, not gonna bring them back. Anyways, I can imagine if you, if you sue because of a person was making the money for the family to live on, you can sue for that. But if you're just mad, you're going to sue. Now, um, anyways, I heard this on a podcast. Oh, my goodness. This guy said he co-signed a loan for a friend, a girl. I don't know if he had, if he wanted something out of her or not, but she swore up and down. Oh, I'm going to pay you back. I'm going to pay you back. I'm going to pay you back. Here's some life advice. Don't ever move in with friends. They might be great friends. Don't ever move in with friends. I had a friend move in with me. It was all right. He moved out shortly after that, but get an apartment. Don't ever get an apartment with friends. Don't do that. Just live by yourself. Do it by yourself. That's that's some honest truth. And, but anyways, he co-signed for a loan for like 15 grand for a car or something. And I was like, he doesn't know. All of a sudden, she isn't paying it back. She blocked him on Facebook, changed her number and everything. I was, what could you do? You're going to have to pay that off. 
You should have thought of that before. It's like getting an adjust, uh, uh, adjustable rate mortgage. <laughs> you signed up for it. Nobody held a gun to your head. You have to pay it. If the rate goes up, oh, sure, it looks good when it's you know 0.5% or 9% or 1%, yeah, but you signed it. It's like you know, the college debt, college debt. You're the one to sign for it. You pay it off. Don't rely on the handouts. Do it yourself. But he didn't, she didn't pay it, and he doesn't know what to do. The, the host of the podcast says, I would go try to go legal action. Me, what I would do, I would confront her right in her workplace and tell her what she's doing right in front of everybody to tell her what kind of person she is. She'll probably end up quitting. And you can't get you for harassment. You just go in there one time and say it and then leave. I says, I'm going to leave you alone. But I want you to know you owe me. That's just wrong. You're going to do a guy like that. Man, that's wrong. Gosh, man, that's wrong on so many levels. Ah. All right, here's the last one, number 21. Uh, I went to the hospital about four years ago. Four years ago. I knew what it was. And I got it taken care of. It's you know, a couple doctor visits, boom, taken care of. But when I was in there, I had this doctor come in. All right. This, I got to take a drink because this is just boggles my mind. Not bad. Not bad. Um, he comes in. He has a stethoscope. All right. This is exactly what he did. Let's say my little fidget thing is his little stethoscope. All right. Here's exactly what he did. <clears throat> Stuck him in his ear. He come up here. He goes, uh, uh. That's it. That fast. What? <laughs> what did he just do? He just made it look like he was doing something. Man, I couldn't believe it. I just. I should have said, what the hell was that? You know, that's what I should have said. You just put it there. He put it there. What did you hear? You could have put it on my brain and just heard, a, heard less. Wait. Yeah, probably. Probably heard it more of. No, it would have been less. I don't know. He just put it there and put it there. He didn't, he didn't ask me to breathe. He didn't ask me to cough. Didn't, you know, didn't. To turn your head left? <laughs> Nothing. He just, er, er. What kind of doctor is that? And he had an assistant with him. Dude, you know, right and everything down. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Hey, you know, you, you, you give him the most powerful drugs we got for whatever his symptoms were. Are you kidding me? That's why we have the opioid problems. You're, you're making, you're, give, you're prescribing things for people that don't need these powerful drugs. Yeah, when I when I went to a dentist, a big brand name dentist, big company, I got a, I got a tooth pull. He prescribed me Vicodin. I think I might have mentioned it. He prescribed Vicodin for a pulled tooth. I I just walked out. And I tore that thing up. I I, I, I ain't taking that. I threw it. I I just ripped it up. I was like no. And I heard him a couple other times in other rooms. I'm gonna, you want to prescribe your Vicodin? Vicodin. I got my teeth clean. Get it, Vicodin. Unbelievable. And then you wonder why there's, it's probably, you know, they. I don't know how they get paid. Maybe they get paid to, when they hand them out, they get them, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to go any farther with that. But uh, there you go. I don't know how long this video has been long. It's pretty, pretty long. But uh, this is a very good beer. It's not bad. A lot of people say, oh, that's garbage beer. No. I'll tell you what, if you walk into a bar with Milwaukee, or a bar, you walk into a party with a 12 pack of Milwaukee's best, I've done this. We were playing football. And I had Milwaukee's best, because I like Milwaukee's best at the time. Um, and everybody's drinking beer. You know, they're a good time, having a good time. I didn't play football, but I just watching them. I'm drinking a beer. And they ran out of beer. 
<laughs> I got tackled for my beer. Milwaukee's best. Oh, I ain't gonna drink that crap, but you wanted it when your beer ran out. So there you go. <laughs> there, there were some fun people though. Brian, Brad, Scott, Eric, Shauna, uh, what's her husband's name? Jason. Jason and a bunch of other guys. We were just having a good time. So there you go. All right, folks, I will see you in the next one. And thanks for watching. And remember, know when to say when. Don't overdo it, man. It'll cost too much. It's not worth it. Cheers. Oh, that's going to help me poop. <laughs>